The top stories. BWU hits out at employment tribunal. Two wanted men slapped with murder charges. And popular cricketer George Linton dies at 57. Welcome to Nation News for Thursday, August the 14th, 2014. No matter where you are in the world, at home or abroad, Nation News keeps you connected with what's happening in Barbados. Through our website, video newscast, and online e-papers. So stay connected with Nation News. Your news, your time, your way. Sir so Roy Trotman has expressed his annoyance about the length of time it has taken the Employment Rights Tribunal to deal with the wrongful dismissal cases against the National Conservation Commission. The case was turned over to the tribunal in May after hundreds of NCC workers were retrenched in acrimonious circumstances and amid allegations of political interference. Sir Roy, the retiring General Secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union, is complaining that the tribunal, which is a new entity, has not got around to any of its work and the workload is getting heavier. Apparently, one of the reasons given for the delay in hearing the NCC case is that several panel members were on holiday. Meanwhile, Sir Roy's hand-picked choice to succeed him as BW General Secretary will likely not receive an automatic coronation. Tony Moore was regarded as a shoo-in for the position after she was recommended by Sir Roy, but she's now being challenged by Veronica Griffith. Both women hold the post of Deputy General Secretary and will contest the election at the BWU Delegates Conference on August the 30th. Sir Roy will address the conference that day in his farewell speech. Two wanted men who turned themselves in this week have now been charged with murder. 20-year-old Romario Antonia Clark of Gardenland Country Road St. Michael and Rashain Anil Blenman, 18, of Fitzphilly St. James, have appeared in court charged with the murder of Mark Walton, who was shot while at a bus stop in Fitz Village earlier this month. Clark was also charged with serious bodily harm and unlawful use of a firearm in connection with the July the 17th shooting of another man, as well as another wound in charge dating back to December last year. Hotel Accounting Executive Colin Jordan is in pole position to represent the Barbados Labour Party in St. Peter at the next election. Mr. Jordan has been formally appointed constituency caretaker by the St. Peter branch, which also gave his backing to Mia Motley. The current MP, Owen Arthur, resigned from the party last month after expressing his dismay at Mrs. Motley's leadership. Mr. Jordan, a former president of the Hotel Association, said he would be proud to serve the constituency where he grew up. A formal election candidate nomination process will take place later. Local and Caribbean consumers will soon have a website where they can get information on the safety of food and non-food items. The Ministry of Commerce will soon be introducing the CADICOM Rapid Alert System. CARICOM's Philip McLaren explained how it will work across the 15 member states. They would be responsible at the National Contact Point for transmitting information on non-food consumer goods through the, the regional clearinghouse, which will be based at the CARICOM Secretariat. So the National Contact Point is very critical to the process by first and foremost working together and in a coordinated manner with the national surveillance systems and agencies in each member state. Minister of Commerce Donville Innes said the new system will help regional governments ensure that items bought by citizens were safe and of high quality. In sport, we have the sad news of the death of George Linton, one of Barbados' most popular cricketers and coaches. He was 57. Linton represented Barbados as a leg spinner in 26 first-class matches between 1981 and 1990 taking 78 wickets at a shade under 30 apiece. He also played for Spartan and went on to become a national selector and a coach at the National Sports Council. And finally, an Australian hospital has been forced to issue an apology after it faxed out death notices for 200 patients who are still alive. Austin Hospital of Melbourne accidentally sent the erroneous death notices to the family doctors of its patients, 
In the notice, the physicians were informed that their patient had died following their hospital visit. The notice was supposed to report that the patients had been discharged. And that's Nation News for Thursday. For more news, log on to our website, nationnews.com, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And of course, get to Weekend Nation on Friday.